Guys, Coach, I'll open with a comment. Please raise your hand, keep them up for me for a second, and we'll get to you. How are we doing today? Good. Good. Well, we're excited to be back in fall camp, uh, getting ready for the challenges of the season. We've had a really good off-season program. We've had a really good summer. This is one of the best uh, conditioned teams that we've had coming out of summer camp when we do our fall testing. And we were excited to get started yesterday with our first practice. Sort of the goals of what we want to try to accomplish is discipline, accountability, put the team first. Those are things that I've talked about in the past that I think are very, very important. But I also think, especially for experienced players and young players for different reasons, it's really important that they're able to focus on what they control today. We have so many players here who get frustrated about what happened yesterday or they get a little complacent because they had success yesterday. And then we get some players who are worried about what's going to happen in the future. Uh, and really, the things that you do today correctly, making the right choices and decisions, having the right work ethic, preparing yourself to go out and play at a high level on a consistent basis, that's what really prepares you for the future. So that's what we're sort of trying to get guys to do. Focus on what's happening now. Understand that's what you control, and that's what's going to help you most in your future. You know, all of us are a little bit addicted to tomorrow. You know, I'll quit smoking tomorrow, I'll go on a diet tomorrow, I'll lose weight tomorrow, uh, I'll study, I'll start studying tomorrow. Uh, but really, making it happen today is the way you improve, that's the way we'll get better, that's the way you'll create more value for yourself, and that will really help our team, you know, get a lot better. Uh, as well. I'm really pleased with the way the new coaching staff has come, come together. Uh, we have new leadership on both sides and those guys have been really, really done a really good job of developing relationships with the players. They're very knowledgeable, they're well organized, do a good job of leadership and the, the coaching staff had, has fell into place very nicely as well. So uh, I'm really excited about the staff that we have and uh, what they've been able to accomplish, the relationship that they've been able to develop with the players and how the players have responded to um, on both sides of the ball. We do have a couple players that will be out for not an extended period of time, but Miller, Miller foresaw I had a foot injury, which slowed him down a little bit for the summer. Uh, he will likely be back in a few days. LeBron Bray uh, had an ankle injury also in the summer, and he will probably be back in a week or so. Nigel Knott uh, has some medical issues that we're trying to work through, and it's really a little bit undetermined as to you know when he'll be able to get out on the field and, and go to work. But other than that, we were pleased with the conditioning level of our team, the attitude of our team, and how they. Uh, gotten started in this fall camp and we had a very productive practice yesterday. Coach, we'll start over here with Charlie. All right. You just mentioned the injuries, but guys like Terrell Lewis and Chris Allen, how close are they to 100%? What do you want to see out of them and the outside linebackers in general in camp? Terrell Lewis is able to practice. Um, we'll probably try to manage his reps to some degree, but he practiced all day yesterday, made a lot of plays. Uh, did a really good job. He's worked hard all summer. You know, we keep these catapult numbers on guys in terms of what their explosive movements are, how much they can duplicate it. And, you know, he's back to a level higher than he was before he got hurt two years ago. So we're really pleased with the work that he's done and how he's recovered. And I think we want to try to manage him so that he can be productive and get him through this season is important. He's a good leader on our team. I think the outside backers are, we have three guys there right now who I think could be very productive players. Anthony Jennings has done a really, really good job around here. He's a good leader. He's been a very productive player. Um, and Chris didn't get to play much last year, uh, but because he was injured, but we had 
sort of the big plans for him last year too. So hopefully if we can stay healthy at that position, that will be a real plus for our team. And I think we got some young newcomers that you know, might be able to contribute at the position as well. Middle left with Michael. Yeah. In 2018, uh, did you offer Zach Smith of Ohio State a job? You know, I talked to a lot of people about jobs. And I think that uh, we do background checks and we do reviews on people and um, we decide whether we want to hire a guy or we don't want to hire a guy. Uh, I think it's pretty common that sometimes people that get interviewed someplace or someone calls and shows interest in them that the way this profession works is that you go in and use that as leverage to try to improve your situation where you are now, especially if you have a job, or you decide that that's a better opportunity for you. So um, we talked to a lot of coaches about a lot of things. Um, I really never did ever offer this guy a job. We did interview him, and he did a nice job in the interview. Uh, but it was when we did the background check that we decided that uh, there was a better opportunity to hire somebody else, and that's what we did. Up here with John. You're obviously very familiar with Sarkeesian, but even for a better person like him, can you benefit from a couple of years in the NFL? I mean, have you seen him grow since then? Well, I've always had a lot of respect for Sark. Um, he's very well organized. He does a good job with the players. He's a good teacher. He's got a really good personality. He's easy to work with. I think he does a great job of managing the staff. I'm sure that I know that my time in the NFL, and I can't really speak for him, how that sort of helped his development as a coach. But my time in the NFL was very beneficial to me because you work on football or how you're gonna bring personnel to your team. And when you do that all the time, I think you get better at it. And, you know, Sark was, did a really good job when he was here before, and I've been very pleased with the job that he's done uh, since he's been here. Coach, middle right with Adam. Hey, Nick, uh, specifically with the wide receivers and the, these you know, top four guys, what has been your assessment of them? Obviously, a decent amount of hype around that position here specifically. So just your you know, blanket assessment of that position. Well, I think that those guys were all, all very productive last year. I think that there's not a player on our team that doesn't have things that they can work on to improve. Uh, that will create more value for them and help them play more efficiently and effectively <clears throat> for our team. And I think that's sort of how I assess that position. You know, those guys are great competitors, they're hard workers, they do a good job. You know, average players really don't, they, they, they would like just to be left alone. You know, good players really want to be coached, and great players want to be told the truth. And I think these guys are always seeking the truth in terms of what can they do, character, attitude, competitor, technical execution at their position, you know, to get better. So I have a lot of respect for what those guys have done here and how much I think they can uh, improve in the future and be even more productive. Let's go back over to left, Ryan. Given the strength you guys do have at wide receiver and the attrition you've had at tight end, could you foresee maybe some more 10 personnel? And if so, um, I mean, do, or, or are you wedded to the idea of having a tight end on the field um, at any point? Well, what is 10 personnel? I mean, where did you get that? I mean, is that. Does that mean one back, no tight end? Is that what that means? It's kind of an NFL term. Really knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. Very knowledgeable. So for those of you who don't know what 10 personnel is, it means there's four wide receivers in the game and one back. Um, I think you're always trying to get the best players that you have on the field in the most productive positions that you can get them in. Uh, I think that I would say that because we have four receivers who have shown great capability of making plays, rather than we feel like we have some tight ends that can contribute to our team and do a really good job. So we're, we're not, we would not do that because of the tight ends. We would do that because of the quality of receivers that we have. 
So we're going to continue to try to develop. I think when you get in that situation, you're very limited, you know, to some degree as to what you can do. Um, when you have a tight end game, the multiples of what you can do, you can do two back runs, you can do four open, which is the same thing as having uh, 10 personnel in the game. And, um, you know, you can do a lot more things from a protection standpoint. Mm -hmm. Go here with the season. We have a season. We also have 12 personnel. <laughs> we have 11 personnel. 11 personnel, I know. Because it's 11 guys, right? But we, we, we don't use the numbers. You know, we color code the, the personnel group. So I think you guys should get a little more current on what our terminology is because, you know, I, 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 I tell our coaches all the time we can't call something on offense different than we call it on defense because I can't get it right. So um, it's red. <laughs> I was, was going to ask about green personnel. But, uh, if not, um, we had contacted the university last week about the Abiyanoma's situation, and I didn't know if there was anything you could, you could add to that. Well, you know, there's laws the that protect players on, and students on what you can and can't say. I mean, the guy was dismissed from school, and that's really all I can say about it. And we'll go back over here with Chris Lowe on the uh, left. Nick, this is your 13th preseason camp in Alabama. How much is preseason camp involved during your time? And what do you look for in particular in preseason as you try to sort of identify what the identity of your team is? Well, I think it's evolved a lot because we've changed how we practice, how we prepare. We've had a lot of rule changes relative to player safety. But we've always tried to use fall camp as a, a character development period of time. We have a speaker every night. We have somebody who uh, has a message that's going to help players create value for themselves in terms of the choices and decisions they make you know, for their future. And it's not all geared toward football. Uh, but you also want the hardcore fundamentals of intangibles that you wanted to try to create on your team probably is best done in the off season and in fall camp. Things like discipline, mental and physical toughness, guys creating the habits of giving the kind of effort that you want to have on your team, uh, understand the competitive standard that you have to play to when you play really, really good teams uh, in our league and outside of our league. So those are the hardcore fundamentals that you're trying to really establish. And obviously one of the things that uh, we're always trying to get a good handle on in fall camp is how do you execute? Not necessarily what play we're running, not necessarily what defense we're running, but how can we go and execute these things without making a lot of metal, metal error? So the knowledge and experience that you can develop during fall camp, uh, I think really helps players in that regard. Wrap up last two games in the temple. What is it about Shaheen Carter physically and or mentally that allows him to be successful at star and safety and which do you see either of those as a more natural fit for him? Well, Shai has actually played every position for us. He started out here as a corner. We made him a star because he was a pretty good star. We sort of had him play money at times. So we've also had him now play safety. And I think Shaheen Carter would fit in one of the probably top two or three players when it came from a knowledge standpoint. He can answer every question in a meeting about every position. He, he really had, he would be a great, great coach. So I think that's what creates a lot of diversity for him as a player to be able to play multiple positions uh, because he's very smart and you know, it means something to him. You know, he's, he spent a lot of time trying to learn this stuff. He prepares well for the games. So I, I can't say that one position is more natural for him than at the other. He's always done a pretty good job wherever we decided to fit him in. Wrap up your time. And then Dickerson, the Florida State grad transfer, what, what have you seen? Or what would you like about him? And do you find him a more natural fit as an interior lineman or a tackle? Well, we've only had one practice, and it's not been in pads. So 
to make a total evaluation is pretty, pretty difficult based on what the guy's done since he's been here. But we like the fact that he he's played a lot of good football against a lot of good football teams. He's got a lot of experience. Uh, he's big. He's a strong guy. Um, will have a physical presence on the offensive line for us in terms of his toughness. So, but I think it's you know too early to tell exactly where he would be the best fit for us relative to the other players that we have. And you know we want to coach all the offensive linemen that we have and try to get the best five out there. And he's certainly a guy that's competing for uh, one of those spots. Okay. Thanks, coach. All right. Thank you. So, uh, other than